Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to this um, year in end review uh, for my uh, Patreon supporters. First of all, big thanks and thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Uh, this Inkscape development thing is a is a big trial run as we're going to go go through it with the stats for this year and uh, i just want to have a big thank thank you for everybody that's put their trust in me um there's a one this is the last week where if you want to claim this this inkscape t-shirt oh camera um then please do comment email tweet etc and i'll put your name in the hat uh i'll do the drawing next week so this is your final wa warning if you're interested in in that shirt it's a men's large okay so what do we have this this week uh first of all i wanted to um basically show you uh the activity that i've done this entire year so you can see sort of like my yearly activity within the inkscape pro project um and then I want to show you the uh, the some of the uh, really sort of standout things. One uh, one item per month that I've picked out as sort of like the things that kind of make me proud of the work that we've been a been able to do. Um, and I hope that you enjoy uh, this sort of re review. Um, so let's have a look. Okay, so the f the first thing is this is the number of commits that happened in 2020, 2020 just by me and uh, split into the three main pro projects that I contribute to, the Inkscape extensions, the website, and the Inkscape codebase itself. Um, just to be aware that this is not a representation of all activity. There are many, many confounding fa factors that make this data, you know, lots of asterisks. Um, but I've divided it up into the sort of periods of the year, and we can see here that during the Inkscape 1.0 bug fixing stage, we had a lot of uh, Inkscape activity, uh, and then during the summertime, there was a lot more extensions and website, and you know, a lot less code activity. Uh, and then during the Hackfest, uh, there was more website activity as I was fi fixing issues that people were, were finding with their website. But what this doesn't show is all of the activity of doing all those video con conferences and uh, doing all the video editing and all of the other preparation work that had to go into that. Uh, and then the final part is the part that you've you guys have probably seen with all of the Patreon update videos, which is uh, when I created the pa Patreon account and started to try and get user user involvement. Um, and what I think is most interesting with the graph is that you can see the amount of code going into Inkscape itself rather than extensions and website and other stuff has has greatly increased um, in the in the last sort of half of the year. Um, and I think this is due to the fact that I'm focusing so much more on uh, user needs and I'm not and I'm making far fewer assumptions about what I think users want. Um, mostly because I really, really, really do have to go out there and ask users both to help me with the fun, fun funding, but also like ask them actually, actually, what is it that you find most frustrating with Inkscape? And so there's a lot of there's a lot more Inkscape activity itself. Uh, and just for comparison, you you can see the growth in pa Patreon earnings at the bottom. Um, so that's the num number of commits. Uh, I won't go into the details about the specific commits themselves. It would take all day. And I do try and keep these uh, videos somewhat shorter. Um, so next, we're going to do a little, little bit of er earnings. Now, this is very, very, very early days. The pa Patreon has only been running for a short amount of time. Um, so you can see it's a very slow growth in this blue line. Um, and hopefully in the coming year, we'll see an, an uptick in earnings. Um, considering the growth rate uh, of both the contracting in Inkscape and also the Patreon account, I'm probably going to need to take more non-Inkscape uh, contracting work in 2021. Uh, that's simply because if I, if I projected this out for 2021, I would be earning something like a dollar an hour um for a full-time job which would be pretty bad um but this is this is very very early days so i'm kind of expecting there to be uh, a you know a, a a pattern of growth where eventually you end up with 
uh, an amount of money that you can actually use to um, you know live on. Um, so next year, hopefully I'll be able to do this again next year, and you, you hopefully will see the yellow line tick back up a little bit um, and uh, the Patreon line continue to go up. Um, again, th thank, thank you to all the contractors as well as the patrons who um, paid me to work on Inkscape this year as well. Um, okay, so what do we have in terms of highlights for the year? So... The first thing that this year, uh, or I should say last year now, because I'm re recording this in 2021, um, was the, the the blockers list. Uh, the 1.0 release was kind of blocked at the at the very start of last year because we had all of these issues and we didn't really have a structure for how to prioritize them or fix them. And so I had to create a system of prioritizing bugs and asking non-developer teams to tell us what the, pro the problems are, right? Like, would you put Inkscape out in the current uh, state that it's in? And so it's, this is more of an administrative um, feature, some, something that I developed that didn't involve code at all. It just involved just trying to get people to come, come to together, and I'm, and I'm kind of proud of it. Um, in February, uh, all of the bug fi fixing, especially the, the, the Windows bugs that we, the, that we managed to fix, uh, this involved booting up VirtualBox with, um, you, know, you know, a very very slow Windows client, uh, and it could take days to compile. So, like even the tiny bugs that I managed to fix took days and days of work. Which, you know, I'm I'm, I'm proud that I got through it, th through it. Uh, that I bit my tongue over, over using win Windows and 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 like, and because I think there's an awful lot of Inkscape users on win Windows who will appreciate the fact that these things were fixed. Uh, in March, I'm very proud of the speed up di di diagnostics. Uh, not only did I manage to fix a few performance issues, uh, I learned a lot more about how to do the di diagnostics in, in with, with Inkscape and how to try and narrow down where we can improve the speed. Um, this is going to be an, an increasing issue because Inkscape seriously suffers from speed issues on every operating sy system that, that we know of. Um, in April, I'm very proud of the release. I think we did a really good job. Um, we had caching issues that happened with, with the website, and I had to be on call as the web website administrator to, essentially, I spent two days uh, without sleep to kind of reconfigure our caching ser service with fa Fastly so that we could deliver all of the Inkscape downloads that were being asked for. And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that, that the 1.0 release was so... Uh, spectacularly large that that we we just had so many down downloads um, that even the caching uh, that we had set up was too brittle. Um, so now it's much more fle flexible. In uh, in May, I'm really proud of the fact that I managed to fix a markers issue, which is where uh, previous Inkscape versions would um, create an entirely new marker for every single color that you want. Um, and and it would update the drop drop down box in a really horrible way. Um, all of that is gone. That code got removed, and it's replaced with SVG two uh, context fill and stroke, which is much more appropriate. Um, in June, very pleased I managed to bring back the connector tool, uh, multi tool, but also I managed to fix the the, the drag uh, bug where it wouldn't update the lines, which is just so silly. But it's like. It's just these small things that really make the, the difference between feeling that Inkscape is a tool that helps you and a tool that gets in your way. Um, in July, uh, a lot of time was dedicated to the Inkscape Hackfest 2020. This was an online event because of COVID. Usually we have Hackfests in person and it's a lot more developer fo focused. Uh, but I decided to take six weeks uh, to do an event every single week uh, where we were focusing on different teams. Um, you can check out the, the 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 videos. There was a lot of video editing work that went into them. Uh, that went onto the Inkscape YouTube pages. A uh, big shout out to everybody that participated in that because it was a, it was a you know time out to actually be able to contribute. Um, in August, very proud of the the the, the, web, the website calendars. Um, I think it's important that Inkscape has infrastructure that everybody feels com comfortable using that does the kinds of interesting things that the project uh, developers and all other teams need. Um, in September, I've got to say, 
uh, the the node copy cut and paste functionality. This functionality has cropped up so many times since I I fixed it or I added the feature feature where I have deliberately booted up a developer version of Inkscape in order to use that feed feature because it's it's so so useful. Um, in October, I did the uh, the raster exporter with JPEG and OBDPNG and TIFF and so on and so on. Um, that fun fun functionality, I think, is going to be uh, important. It still needs to be improved, you know, going for forwards. But at least this is a first step in having raster exporter types in in, in Inkscape. Um, in November, I threw myself at the starts and startup that dialog. I thought it was very important to have that that dialog finished. Um, so I didn't finish the uh, alternative project, which was the object start dialog, um, uh, in, in order to get the starts and startup note dialog finished. Um, I, it's looking really nice. Hopefully pe people will like it when it lands in 1.1. 1, 1. 1. Um, and in December, as well as all of the other bug fixes that we did af after freeze, I'm very proud of the fix for the eraser tool um, because there's nothing quite so embarrassing as like trying to erase some something and getting this big red splodge that stays even when you when you unclick simply because of a a, a problem with the code um you know fixing that in a fundamental way means that that problem won't happen anymore um so that's the that's the that's the entire year i'd be very interested to hear what you guys think is the the most uh, interesting thing that you've seen in inkscape development it doesn't have to be developed by me it could be developed by anybody and um, I hope everybody's got some really nice new New Year's, um, what do they call those? Things I want to do in the new year. I know that has a name. I just forgot what it is. <laughs> uh, and and please do let me know. Um, click like, follow. Please share this video. Um, let's get uh, 2021 to be the year where Inkscape is... Uh, pushing for forwards and and creating all of the new f features and bug f fixes that all of the the, the users need. Um, thank you very much for, for watching, and I'll see you next week.